Lee is 26, mouldy, brown eyes, medium black hair, size 16 with a C cup. Amy is 33, European, blue eyes, blonde hair, size 12 with a double D cup. Yeah, she should be fine with you. Uh, slightly, but like quite bigger boobs. Okay, well, we look forward to seeing you. Okay, bye. Come on here, you need to get changed. Where are you? Well, come on, get changed quickly then and then we can make your breakfast. Hurry up. We've created a family atmosphere. Are you up? I love that we have that environment. We all care about each other. We all have, hold each other's hands and have each other's backs. And much the same with the clients too. You know, we, there's some clients that are just, you know, they're the bee's knees. We love having them. They get Christmas presents and things from us. I just love that about the place. It's a great feel. People just don't understand what actually happens there. They think it's filthy. They think it's, you know, all messy and dirty and there's no hygiene standards. I was flatting on my own and I was struggling to pay bills. I was desperate, so I was a working girl for six months. I learned a lot. I think this industry can't be for everybody. If it was, everyone would be in it. You're giving yourself away and there's lots of different levels of what people expect for themselves as far as sexual relations and this can be a big breach of what some people feel for themselves. It can really screw some people up if I think if they're not prepared and if they don't come into it with the right understanding and the right expectations of the industry. You've got to be sure of yourself. We open this in the first place primarily to give the people that can't enjoy a life of sex. I'm really focused on elderly who have possibly widowed or divorced on their own, people that are socially, uh, physically or mentally disabled that may not have that out to enjoy a everyday sex life. Those sorts of people are my motivation for being here. I think when it comes to challenges, the whole thing is actually a challenge. You can't say there's a biggest challenge. I'd say this is one of the most challenging jobs you've got. When you first start, it's hard to separate the person you are up here to the person you are at home. The emotions of being up here and doing what we're doing. <laughs> It's hard to take. Um, how, I don't know how you'd explain it. It's something that you can't explain. It's something that you experience. Oh, I've had girls that have worked in the past that I know of that have been shut out of family, you know, because they found out they were working. I mean, yeah, they're only trying to do the best by their family. They're trying to provide. Yeah, no different to going and working at Pack and Save or um, any supermarket or any job, really, labour a job. You know, it's no different. You're there to earn an income. We've had government departments that have judged the girls for working in them and it's like, hang on a minute, you guys set the legislation, you guys legalised it. Even with the Reform Act in place, I think we're still segregated quite a bit. It's helping me find myself again and have confidence in myself, making me realise that I need to look after myself again by dressing in nicer clothes and putting a bit of makeup on, you know, all those things you sort of forget after being a housewife or mother for years. Coming to work up here has reminded me to take care of myself and that I am important and that I can still look beautiful. Good evening, how are you tonight? Good. Um, uh, what girls do you have available? So we have Amy, she's 33, European, blue eyes, blonde hair, size 12 with a double D cup. We also have Lee, who's 26, mouldy, brown eyes, medium black hair, size 16 with a C cup. Could you do escorts? Yes, we do. So it'll be 180 for an hour, 190 if you paid FOS. Okay, uh, could I pay me for an hour, please? Of course you can.
there's different ways that different girls cope with the industry and working in the industry. The longer you've been in it, the higher the walls get and it doesn't phase you as much, it just does become work and you become a little bit numb and it just doesn't affect you. Some people are drawn to stay in the industry because it actually, it works for their lifestyles, it works around families. I need one of these drawers at my house. Me too. I don't have a plan for tonight. Get some sleep before CrossFit in the morning. <laughs> employment levels fairly low and employment opportunities much the same. Even to get a dairy job these days, you know, you're fighting university students that are vying for these spots on dairy farms as, as farm workers. How can you compete with that? That does relate in a lot of people, I think, turning to the sex industry. Seeing people from all different walks of life, you get a different understanding about how lots of people have their reasons for why things are the way they are and why some people are the way that they are. Sometimes you don't give people the time of day when you should, but up here you're stuck in a situation where you kind of have to. You get a bit of understanding of just people in general. I've known Nick for quite a while now, and she is, she is a heart of gold. She would help anybody, even if it was her last, you know, five bucks and they needed bread and milk for their kids, she'd give it. I actually met my husband in the industry. He was a client and I was a working girl. But his understanding of the industry has made it really easy to pop back in, because he understands it from a client's need and a client's perspective. I also have three kids. My youngest ones understand that we go to work at the parlour. Don't necessarily understand, obviously, what that entails. My oldest, however, has far more understanding. I'd like my kids to be accepting of what the industry stands for. The people that work in it is just a job. I'm fine with it, which is very rare for my age group. You get picked on sometimes with some banter, but, I mean, it's nothing much. Some people have said to me, like, Oh, your mum runs the place. Let's go over there. Let's go have some fun. I just take it as banter. It's hilarious. I've been criticised before for normalising prostitution. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. This is normal. It's been around since the turn of time. We're making cards for our clients as a thank you. We like to give them something around Christmas and Easter. Arts and crafts is on in the far now. Our whole entire life doesn't revolve around sex work. It's not all about sex, you know, like we do the school runs, we do the animal feeding. We have our own little struggles in our own lives as well that we move through. We've got marriages, we've got relationships. We're just everybody else. We're the same as the next person that we're walking next to on the street. We're the same people. We just chose a different path to walk down.